This is Pace's Ferry Edition. Today on the Michael and Michael Show, we got guest speaker Michael. <sighs> We're going to sightsee and show some of these bomb ass cribs around here. Probably even going to go the wrong way to show you. All right, what are you people doing? So look at this house right here. Look at that. Damn. Man, that's insane. There's people's front stoops. Front porch. Hey, this is this is serious money right here. Paces Ferry. I'll give you a rundown. Big bop, boop, and a boop, and a big bop, bang, and a bang, bang, bang. So, what are we going to call this video? We're going to call it ADD World. ADD Planet. So let me bring you guys up to speed. Dun, da, da, da. So I've made good friends with Seth, as you all are aware and know. And he's um, he's got a newsletter, right? He's got this. Uh, he's got different. You know, he's got different or things he does, different projects. Wow, these places are insane. So one of his things is. Um, mob newsletter right most of you all should already know Seth spent 25 21 years in prison and he was he knows a lot of the heavy hitters mob guys um, all kind of crazy badass shit he um, he, he was corresponding with Whitey Bulger um, before he died so Seth's got Look at these houses. These are all, these are all somebody's, all right? All these, look at, look at these houses. Gated, you know, gated their own community, whatever you're going to call it. All these people around here, super, super wealthy. These are, these are somebody's, both sides of the road. Look, look at this shit. I mean, look at this. Look at that. Look at that. It's freaking insane. Two gates. It's hard to even grasp all this. Okay, so why was it? We're gonna do this just for the heck of it, since we're on this badass road. Let me go ahead and I'm I'm due to go the other way, but let me give you some of these rundowns. Look at that! You can't even see the house. Major sick crazy money. These are all somebodies. All right. Look at this shit. Look at that. Wow. You know, that's that's definitely a celeb. These are definitely somebody's that live in these big ass gaudy houses. Look at your, sh look at that, freaking insane. I'm glad to be able to share this with you guys. This is crazy, Bill, right here. Look at this. Well, bam, and we're talking straight. Uh, what do you call that? Um, some straight. Uh, hey, am I? some straight up uh, somebody help me out here you know what the hell I'm trying to say some straight gangster shit some straight gangster gangster another I wonder if it gets any more crazy and gaudy something tells me Atlanta Country Club the South I've I worked in there recently not that big a deal I forgot it was on there look at that that's way back there I'm gonna show you on the way out so this is paper mill this is um, it's sick money if you live around here. Look at that. Look at that shit. Crazy money. There's house back there. You gotta get through the gate. This is all about a gated community. Gated. You can't even get to the people's house. That's some of the top dog shit of Atlanta. So anyways, while we're sightseeing, like I said, Seth starting these a mafia newsletter and wow that's a beast it's a beast ass house I gotta turn around this enough um so he he sent me a link to his newsletter I sent it out and I I copied it pasted it and so everyone on my Facebook 
can see it, right? So he's inviting me in, as I discussed, on different um, projects. And that, those be it, there's two. I can show you, or I will show you, Chinese, dirty knees, look at these. If you're interested, let me know, and I will send you the link. I don't know how to do a lot of this stuff in, on the YouTube, but get with me if you're interested, and I will, if you're, if you're on my Instagram, if not, find me on any other plateau, I can send it to you besides YouTube. So, in the newsletter, I read it, and it's talking about, you know, people like, um, this putz, the mobsters that are snitches, Sammy the Bull Gravano, just this kind of, you know, nerdy, you know, stupid shit, you know, that guys are mobsters, narcs, you know, snitches, that shit wouldn't have flown back in our day, right? So how these, you know, so this is basically what this is saying, you know, we got people, you know, looking up to, the, you know, how the mafia's changed, look at that shit. Wow, that's massive. That's a, that's a star. Like he, you could so far back you couldn't even see the house, but it's definitely a celebrity's house. Insane, massive. Everyone who lives around here's sick, wealthy. Look, this house is so far back you can't even see it. These people got sick money around here. So it basically talks about how the mafia has changed and this, that, and the other. It talks about Gambino. And for those of you that don't know all of my stuff, I'm from New York. Oh, this stuff is just insane. I just want to go in there and just chill out, chillax. People have sick money. Look at this. Look at that. That's freaking wild. I hope you got as good a view as... Um, that shit's just sick. So, it's basically, like I said, it's talking about the time of the change. And so, for those of you that do or don't know, um, I've done videos on this. So, I'm from, I was born in Queens. My dad uh, grew up in Brooklyn. And my dad grew up around the mafia. My uncle... My dad's sister's husband is full-blooded Italian, and they invited him in. They were all the time trying to invite him in. Look at this shit. This is sick. Look at this stone dam. I hope you got to see that chandelier. It was like some next-level shit. All this is next-level shit around here. All rich people. Let me try not to get too ADD to forget what I'm talking about and shit. And I already did. Whoops. Too late. So, um, like I said, my dad grew up in the in the mob genre, in the mob era. My uncle's was full blood Italian, and his uncle was Joe Napolitano. That's in the seventies. That he was way way up there in the mafia. Pretty much run Capo, run all of uh, New York mafia in the seventies. Joe Napolitano. You can look this up. You can fact check me. And whatever I tell you, is not, it's not going to be a lie. I'm not going to say something, as I've said over and over again. I'm not going to say something stupid or wrong and let someone check me and make an idiot out of me. It's not going to happen. So, as you already should already know, every one of you should already know, um, I was in a John Gotti 4th of July block party turned right against the police. That story's bomb. It's right here on my channel. These houses are just mad, freaking magnificent. It's crazy. And by the way, we're right on the Chattahoochee River, too. So bodies get dumped right here all the time. Uh, more so back in the day. Um, a lot of bodies in the Chattahoochee River. That's Chattahoochee. We're, we're crossing over the Chattahoochee right now in Paper Mill. It's a high dollar area. And you see the Chattahoochee. And so, like, etc., etc. So. My dad was in the Mafia days in New York, and he's got stories for days. He knew Carlos Gambino. He had a deal set that he was going to be Gambino's um, driver, either five years for two mil or two year two mil for five years. I don't remember which. My dad had this deal set up with G Carlos Gambino two weeks before he died, and he wound up getting whacked, and the deal never went down. But my dad had that offer on the plate. He's got stories for days, months, weeks. I've even done videos on his stories. 
He's got stories that he won't tell, that, that I can't tell you. Um, he knows of stories, and he's told me I know the stories, but I'm not dumb enough to put the shit on here. Um, in those days, he knew people that come up missing, okay? He worked construction. Him and my uncle were construction and is what they called working for the union, a.k.a. the mob. The mob run owned all the construction in New York, and it was called working for the union. Um, I can't get into specifics, because I'd be an idiot if I did. I can't give no nothing, no um, juicy on none of it. Um, so as far as anyone could say so far what I'm saying, anyone could say what I'm saying and be a liar. Of course, I'm not lying, but what I'm saying is I haven't gone far enough in, de in detail to make myself have to uh, be in jeopardy, or my father. Um, so, like I said, he's told me stories, and if and if I even said like um, you know a certain, I could just say a few different you know um, things about it, descriptions. And I could wind up getting myself murked, killed, literally. People went talking about stuff, and they they didn't, and they turned up missing. My dad literally has stories of people that went running their mouths and wound up dead. Guys he knew and worked with and was around every day, and all of a sudden went to saying the wrong shit and got themselves murked. There again, I can't. These stories are juicy. I started to tell Seth in our video, and you can see in the end of me and Seth's video, he says, all right, we start talking about it, and we cut the clip. I'm not going to say no dumb shit on here. It's going to get me murked. But I know the kind of shit that I could say would get me murked. So my dad has stories for weeks, months, years, days. Um, he grew up in it. And um, so um, my dad... Uncle's best friend was this guy Bobby. Bobby was um, one of John Gotti's henchmen. Okay, he had this guy Bobby, and Bobby had this um, friend who was slow, not retarded but stupid. Carlos, Carlos, and Bobby. This is for people that are actually in the know. So, there again, I'm not going to say no dumb shit that's a lie and make myself look like an idiot. Have someone come on here and. And, you know, call me out, make me out to be an idiot. So, as I said, I was around in those days. My dad was around in those days. We used to go, and this guy Bobby, who was John Gotti's henchman, we used to go to his house, and I watched, um, whatchamacallit, uh, Mike Tyson's fights at Bobby's house. Bobby was a, a mafia-made man. And I can remember back in the day them talking about us leaving and we were talking in the car and I, I can distinctly remember, I was a little kid, but the, I can remember the first time I heard made men, what I re remember asking about that. I remember hearing the word made men and I was confused and I asked my dad and he kind of hushed me about it. I remember shit and tell my dad things that he don't remember. He doesn't even at this point remember like, for instance, the, the Carlos Gambino, who's going to be his driver. I brought that up on our last conversation. I said, oh, you knew that? You know, so, so you see, my dad's 85 years old. He's not as sharp and as crisp as he was. He can't remember stuff already that he's told me. I told him about this guy, Joe Lioli, he told me about. He don't even remember this the guy's name. So his memory's starting to slip. There's a video on here where I talk with my dad. And I've gone over this and talked about this. At the end of the video, after me and my dad talked for 20, 30 minutes on tape, my dad says, Michael, you, you, you wouldn't be, you're not recording this, are you? You, rec you wouldn't record this, would you? No, Dad, I wouldn't. Felt like an asshole. So I didn't, I couldn't put out that video. I put out a small f fragment of it. You just hear my dad's voice, and I ask him a couple of questions. I'm not going to go through and put that whole video out, not without his approval, his say so. I've been, um, I've been molding him for this for some time, right? Really, even longer than I've been on YouTube, even longer than I ever even thought about doing anything with my life. I've been molding my dad and and to the store for this story for ages now. 
like I said, longer than I've been on YouTube, longer than I ever, before I even thought that I would ever amount to do anything more than construction. I've been working on this my whole life because my dad has these badass stories. And like I said, I, we grew up in it. And uh, so the John Gotti 4th of July block party turned a uh, riot. I, and I've said this before, I, the story's bomb, it's on here on my channel, you can go find it, it's at the beginning of the videos. I post this on um, John Gotti era on Facebook, and after all this, I've been telling the story since I was 14 years old now, okay, keep this in mind, I've told the story my whole life. So now, after all this time, I put on John Gotti era on Facebook, and I've and I recently run into a man who was there. Who was actually there and actually told me that the, um, the, the address, the road it was on, 160 and 82 maybe, 160 and something, 82 I believe, in Brooklyn. I asked my dad for my the address, because this is right, the street right next to my aunt and uncle's, right? We have, we had a falling out. Our families had a falling out. And my dad doesn't even remember the um, address where his sister lives, okay? We haven't, they haven't spoken in 30 years. We moved to New York in 1980, maybe longer. Up. We moved here in 1980. They kind of um, broke up as a family, so to speak. My cousin came down here one summer and when I was 12. And that's the last time I've seen my cousin since. So my cousin is full, is, um, his, his dad is the one's full blood Italian. And so they asked him to be in a mob and all that growing up. And so my dad just told me recently, uh, a year or two ago about Joe Napolitano, my brother, my, um, my, um, blah, 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 blah. my uncle's not with us anymore. And my dad told me recently on this video too. I wouldn't have told I wouldn't have told you while your uncle was alive and Joe Napolitano I believe is not alive either so you don't speak of this stuff things have changed times have changed um, you can speak about a lot more I mean look you got freaking uh, Sammy de Bulgavano running his dick sucker um, you know and you got snitching on you know it's acceptable snitching now since fucking insane this did wouldn't have happened in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. You would have gone talking, you automatically been marked. Stanley Gavano wouldn't have made it in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. This day and time, it's okay to be a snitch. It's not okay. But the rules have, and the game's changed. I've been trying to call out Snitch 9 for a fight for about two years now. Help me make it happen. I don't know who um, labeled this video, but uh, there again... Seth's got a, a newsletter that he just sent to me on Instagram, and I am passing that along on Twitter and on Facebook. If you're interested, it's very interesting. I suggest you get with it and come check it out. Like, sh comment, share, subscribe, give me a middle finger. Oh, yeah, one more good one. When, so my cousin came down here when I was 12, right? We just moved into that house, the house that, that I'd done videos about. My cousin Darren came down here. We was at the, I had, like I said, there was a pool and tennis courts across the street from the house I grew up. And my cousin runs, goes off the diving board and he moons, he moons the pool. He literally pulls his pants down and he moons the pool and jumps off the diving board, right? So he got in trouble, got kicked out of the pool, couldn't go swimming for that, caused a bunch of grief. I was a bratty little 12 year old kid and I feel bad. I, I mistreated my, my cousin when he was down here. Um, you know, I was 12. So like, share, comment, give me a finger, give me the moon like my cousin, do what you do and go!